What is up guys, it's your friend, the Lazy Life Guide. It's so good to see you again. Thank you for joining me. Really appreciate it. Today, let's talk about cloning. Ever since Dolly the Sheep was created as the first clone, the idea that we can create life, and not just the creation of life, but the replication of the exact genetic material of one organism into another organism has always triggered questions of ethics and of law. Well, some background facts about cloning. First, as you know, clones are usually genetically unstable and they do not live as long or as healthily as their original non-clone counterpart. And because of this genetic instability, it has always been regarded as something that should not be tampered with, lightly at least. Further, the concept of cloning also brings into notions the idea of bringing life into this world. Could it be irresponsible on the part of its creator if they were to just bring life into this world? Because you're not just creating an object or you're not manufacturing an item. You are actually bringing something that it was inanimated to life. You are animating something. And because of that, that new thing that you have created will now be endowed with sentience and that new thing you have created will be given this gift of life. Or even if you want to consider in a religious perspective, it could be a spirit, if you would. That newly created entity will now have a spirit endowed with the same notions that religion ascribes to human beings. A special place in the universe, a special place in this world. So, if we were to give this gift of life to people by bringing an object into this world, it could be irresponsible if we did this carelessly or for experimental purposes. But the counter argument could be made, right? What about parents? Parents don't have such a duty to do this. I mean, parents can just copulate and produce a child without having to consider these ethical implications. Well, at least uh, not uh, to the same extent that cloning does. So why is there this distinction? It seems somewhat arbitrary, right? Not really. Because when you create life naturally, which means biologically copulating between two individuals, then you're creating a new life that is separate, that has a different DNA, a combination of one and another person, right? But if you were creating a clone, then you'd be an exact copy of a first entity into another entity. And because of that, it leads to another extra dimensional lay of analysis because even if this clone was stable which is as of now not really stable right but even if it were stable there will be legal problems with regards to personality because the law has always regarded a person as being given or ascribed rights so if we were to create a clone then what personality or what rights would this clone have will this clone have the same rights as you or would that clone be you, and therefore you must share the rights? Or should there be a duplication of rights? It's also unclear at the moment. There's also a related issue with regards to cloning. Because if you are cloning something, which means you're copying something over, that's problematic in and of itself. But if you were to copy but modify something, so change maybe an expression of a gene in one way or another, then it leads into the issue of eugenics, right? So eugenics, as we all know, is the process of improving something or changing something's genetic expression to make it better, uh, in quotes, better. Uh, it may not really be better. It's just what people think is better. Maybe, say, a slightly more chiseled jaw for the guys, or maybe a slightly higher metabolism rate for the girls, some, something like that. So it leads to a problem, right? Because you are giving this new thing some quote advantages unquote right but should we actually give this thing advantages not too sure about that and also there is the issue of discrimination who would have access to such cloning technologies as of now only the rich would have this right because uh, CRISPR for example uh, is still in its early infancy stages at the moment so it's largely experimental even though, of course, CRISPR promises to drastically bring down the price of such experiments and of such activities, it now mostly 
resides in the realm of the rich. Would authorizing cloning or passing legislation and laws to permit cloning benefit only the rich? And if so, would this be at the expense of the poor? I mean, I could use a double sometimes, right? I mean, I'm so busy uh, with school and with work and with internships and with projects. I could use a double sometimes. If I were very rich, I could maybe make a double of myself. Assuming, of course, the clone doesn't go rogue and starts to rebel and everything. But what about the poor? Should the poor also be given this opportunity? Because remember, if I had a clone, then I could do double the output, theoretically. Assuming, of course, the clone is stable and doesn't go rogue. Double, triple, quadruple, as many clones as I will make. But the poor will only have one. So would this increase income inequality? Perhaps, perhaps. And therefore, I think there's a risk there. So then the last question will be, how many clones should we permit one person to make? Two? One? One may be, well, of course, the, the minimum. But anything higher than one would be problematic, right? Suppose, let's say, someone were authorized to make 100 clones of themselves, and all these clones were subservient, and all these clones think alike. Would that be fair? So that 100 clones will have 100 times the voting power in elections, or 100 times the rate of doing things. Is that fair? I'm not too sure whether that is. But I guess that will be the issues that we need to sort out before we fully allow cloning. And those are my thoughts. Thank you so much for joining me today. I really appreciate your company. I gotta go now, but I'll see you again in the next one.